So here we are, we're ready to tackle the last part of this lab. Now, if you notice, I have my virtual machine turned off, okay? With it turned off, I'm gonna go in and right click and go into settings. And what I need to do is remove it from the Pioneer Lab and essentially move it over into our virtual environment. Let me show you what I mean. Let me grab this. So remember this diagram here? Well, currently, our virtual machine, this machine, sits on the physical side of the network so that it can access the internet. What we want to do is we'll remove it from this section, okay, basically, and put it over here to where it can reach and join the domain for the Windows Active Directory, all right? So let me go ahead and close that, and we'll proceed with the process. So here we go. I'm in the settings. I'm going to remove this virtual machine. Okay, so I'll remove that. I'll hit apply. Then what I'm going to do is come back in and add hardware. And I'm going to add that virtual network adapter. So a network adapter to the external CIS 279WC. Now, all the, although it's external, it is external because we're using those physical servers. We're connecting those through those physical servers into other servers so that we create a unified Active Directory. As I've shown you, I've got a domain controller on each, a virtual domain controller. Let me show you that. Virtual domain controller on each of your physical servers, okay? So then at that point, I'll hit apply and I will see that it's now connected there and I'll say okay. Now from here, what I need to do is go ahead and fire up the virtual machine and apply from the configuration file you have, I'm actually gonna apply the static IP address, the subnet mask, the default gateway, and most importantly, the DNS servers. Now those DNS servers sit out on the Active Directory servers. It's part of the process, as you learned in the test out configuration. So let me pause while this comes up. I will go ahead and log into my machine here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here once the machine loads. And if you notice, I've got an exclamation point here. I'm going to open up the network settings. And if you notice, there's no internet access. I'm going to go into Ethernet here. I'm going to change the adapter options. That's going to bring up a screen that we're used to seeing. So here's my new virtual adapter. Okay. I can right click. I can rename. If I want, what I can do is I can call this CIS 279 WC external, reminding me which network I'm connected to. Okay. So once I change the name, always a good idea. This is all about the documentation. I'm going to choose properties. I'm going to come in. Notice how it is connected to IPv4. I'm going to choose properties and I'm going to give it that static IP address. So looking at my configuration file, it says that I'm going to be, oh, sorry, 172.16.0.99. Make sure you put in the right IP address here. I'm going to be a 255.255.248 subnet. And although we really don't have an official gateway, I'm going to put that in. Now, here's the important thing. Because we're going to use Active Directory DNS, what I want to do, and this is in the configuration file as well, is I'm going to make this 10 and then 172.16.0.11. Those are my first two domain controllers. Okay. And I'm going to choose OK. I'll go ahead and close this out. Now, let me point something out here. If you notice down here, this exclamation point hasn't uh, gone away. All it's doing is checking to see if we're connected to the internet. At this point, we're not connected to the internet. We're connected to our virtual private network that holds our domain controllers and will hold all of the clients. Now, the next thing I want to do, just to be proactive, is I'm going to open PowerShell. And folks, I want you to get used to PowerShell, so I want you to do this in PowerShell. 
Yes, you can do this in a command prompt, but folks, when we get used to using PowerShell, it's awesome. Let me give you a quick example of something that's really cool in PowerShell. I can come in and say five times 40. PowerShell is going to give me the answer. Yes, it's a basic calculator. So get in the habit of using PowerShell. Now, what I want to do is I want to come in and I want to do an IP config and I do have to have the space. PowerShell requires the space, unlike the command prompt. IP config forward slash all. And that's going to give me my IP address. Now, notice there's the IP address I set, the subnet mask, and the first default gateway. I'm, I'm sorry, the default gateway and then the two DNS servers. So what I want to do is make sure that I can reach out to one of those DNS servers. Okay, so I'm typing in the DNS server. Right now, remember, I can't use the host name because I'm not attached to the Active Directory. If I wanted to, I could get, get crazy. Check the other DNS server and indeed, there we are, there's our reply. So I am ready now to join the domain, okay? And what I tend to do is just come down here and say join. So by typing join, you'll notice connect to a work or school. This has changed a little bit in the new version. I don't happen to like it, but it works. Okay, so what we do is we come in here, access work or school, we click connect. This is gonna go through a process. Now the first thing it's gonna try to do is connect you to an active directory for sure, but what we wanna do is connect to a local domain, okay? So this is gonna run its thing. I'll pause while it does. We'll come back and look at our option that we need. So if you notice after it runs, we can put something in here. This would be if we wanted to connect to Azure, connect to an outside Active Directory, but notice join this device to a local Active Directory domain. So we're gonna do that and we're gonna type in corp because that's the subdirectory of our Active Directory domain. At this point, it's gonna bring up this I'm gonna just use the administrator. I will have supplied you. Actually, I need to do this probably. I need to go corp backslash administrator and then the password and then choose okay. So it's gonna bring this up. Okay, I, I can change it to administrator. Remember, I'm logged in as an administrator. Okay, so I'm right now going to create a standard user and I'm just going to call that user eric.magidson and matter of fact, you know what, I'm just going to skip this step. So I'll skip this step. Go ahead and skip that step. I'll show you why and I'm going to restart now. So as you can see, here's my machine right here. I'm going to go ahead and do control alt delete. Okay. And if you notice, I'm still logging in as the local computer, but now I can choose other user. Notice I'm gonna be logging into the corporate domain. Now, through that other process, by putting in the name and then hitting skip, a standard user account should be created. Now, if we run into a challenge here, I will go ahead and create user accounts for you, okay? So I'm gonna put in the user account that I used uh, the user password that I used on my local machine to try to log in. So what happened is that information should be transferred to Active Directory, creating a standard user for you. If you notice, it's going to take a while because it's going to create now an Active Directory profile on our local machine. So I'll go ahead and pause while it completes. Real quick. You'll see here it is. It's creating the profile, getting things ready. So let's go in real quick. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to go into File Explorer here real quick. We will go into the C drive. We'll go into Users. And what we're going to see is that I have two profiles now. So this was the local profile. And then I have a profile of Eric.Magatson on the Corp domain. All right, folks. So that is it. You are now... Your machine is in Active Directory and you're done with the lab. One final thing, just to show you that that worked, I'm gonna go in here to my domain controller. I'm gonna go into Active Directory, Users and Computers. Here are the computers and if you notice, there is the computer 
that I just instantiated into the Active Directory domain, okay? So domain controllers are here. And again, when you do this, you'll be using an administrative user when it comes up that I will give you in order to instantiate. Folks, congratulations, you're done with the lab. Take care.